what excites you most as a teacher? What excites you most about the inquiry-based model of learning? Well, I suppose it's the fact that I'm always learning myself with the students, and I'm always being surprised. Uh, there's everything is new, and it's um, allowing the students to um, to to be engaged in learning by by giving them the freedom to pursue their own ideas and interests. Um, in doing so, I, I truly believe that we're, we're valuing their questions as important. Um, we allow them uh, uh, to, to negotiate their way through information in this modern era of uh, you know, information technology being, information is so readily available. They, they are learning to negotiate their way through and, and, and in doing so we're hopefully creating citizens that are better prepared for, for tomorrow's world. And so what is it about inquiry that allows them to negotiate better than, say, traditional learning? Well, we allow them to try and um, ask questions, continually ask questions uh, that, that they really have about the material that we're presenting. And then with those questions, we try and, we, we try and uh, get them uh, and it's a bit of a process to teach how to ask big, uh, meaty questions that they can really sink into. Um, but once you get there, they can pursue this with, you know, m our facilitation. But really, we, we allow them to pursue these questions. And, and often, um, I allow them, and, and most teachers here do, allow them to, to share their learning in a way that they are comfortable with, whether it's... Uh, you know, a dance or a work of art or a piece of writing or something to do with technology. Um, so they're teaching other students then and that re truly excites them and allows them to, to learn in a deeper, more meaningful way, I believe. So talk to me about managing a learning environment where uh, kids are allowed to uh, pursue different questions uh, and more important, uh, present their learning in different ways. That is uh, definitely non-traditional. Uh, how do you manage that? How do you manage the assessment? How do you know uh, where kids are at at any given time? Well, um, at first it wasn't, um, it, was, it was a concern. Uh, how is this going to work? Uh, but what we've found is that when students are given control over their learning, there really isn't a whole lot of issues or concerns with off-task behavior. They're excited, they want to be doing this, and we, they might be all over the school creating something or, or learning, but we rarely find them off-task because this is what they want to be doing. They're excited about this. And um, managing it um, is, uh, is checking in with them and, and making sure they're on the right track or, or whatever, well, not necessarily right track, but that they're moving in a direction that's appropriate for their project or appropriate for the broader area of learning that we're, we're engaged in at the time. Um, checking in is, is, can be done in a variety of ways. I like to use technology. I like to have students have blogs or using you know, some kind of uh, shared documents that they can share with me. Uh, and so I can check at home and, you know, or at any time really. Um, but you kind of put the onus on them and, and they really rise to the challenge. It's, it's their job to, to let us know where they're at and, and we get around to, to seeing them, but we're not with them consistently uh, teaching. We're, we're moving around and allowing them to, to have the freedom to be off somewhere else doing what they're supposed to do. And, and it, uh, yeah, luckily it hasn't been an issue. As far as assessing, um, we are, you know, beholden to curriculum, or the curricula for our for Saskatchewan. Uh, so we do, um, you know, create an overarching question to do with the, the areas of study that we're, we're dealing with. Um, we, we create student-friendly uh, outcomes. We re restate them in student-friendly, create them together, these questions and these, these student-friendly outcomes. And then um, we basically, at the beginning of the unit, co-create some questions and, and outcomes that we're working on and, and what is an appropriate uh, level of knowledge for, for each area. At the end of the unit, they, these outcomes and, and questions, uh, they, they take the, the 
whatever template we're using, whether it's a rubric or um, we we take that and they, they speak to it. They um, often there's language arts involved, so we might have a, a written piece of work along with their uh, creation uh, or their representation of learning. But then we also have a kind of have an interview. Uh, they can choose to write it. They can choose to uh, speak about it. They can choose to video themselves. But they just talk about the learning. Uh, I don't have time to interview all of them, uh, so the questions are already there. And they, um, they, they. If it's a, if I'm assessing language arts, maybe I would get them to do a written piece about it. But often I'm not assessing language arts, so I'm assess assessing the knowledge they've, they've come to know. So, um, they, uh, they then, um, you know, speak, video themselves, write uh, in whatever they're most comfortable with to to answer these. Uh, these uh, criteria that we've come up with together uh, at the beginning. What, uh, what would you tell someone that would, uh, um, let's say I'm a traditional teacher and I'm walking to St. Anne's school and I say, well, what the heck is going on here? Where's the teacher? Where's the teacher's desk? Where are the kids' desks? Um, what would you tell them uh, in order to convince them or to inspire them that this might be something that they want to look at? What are they going to notice differently about their kids and learning? Well. If they're parents, I would ask them to think about the time in their life when their children were just bursting with enthusiasm and curiosity. That doesn't go away, or it doesn't have to go away. It's a human desire to learn. It's, it's a child, in a child's nature. They want to learn. We often tell them what they want to learn, and as a result, we can they can lose that or they can turn off a little bit. Um, just think about that excitement and enthusiasm a child can bring. And it can, I teach grade five and six. I, I get that every day with my students. And it's wonderful, it's exhilarating. So th this is a human, what a human and a child wants. They want to learn. Allow them to learn about the things that inspire them. And uh, you can do it. In, and, and still be honest to the to your to your outcomes of your the curriculum for whatever province or state or wherever you work, um, but you can still give them the freedom within those contexts to to be inspired and be inspiring. So, what has been the biggest challenge for you as a teacher in negotiating that space between the questions my students have and the questions they they come to school bursting to explore? and the prescribed curriculum? Well, um, we're lucky in Saskatchewan uh, that uh, the curriculum gives you a certain amount of freedom uh, to, to uh, I mean, it could be, you know, how can I uh, represent uh, history of First Nations and, and, and settler relationships. And it's quite a broad area. There are, that's an outcome, there's a lot of room to negotiate within that um, but I still believe within any area of learning there's something that someone can find that can be a hook and they're showing you uh, even if it's part of that outcome if they're meeting the overall outcome and they're excited about it that's we're, we're keeping kids engaged in school and and we're, we're isn't that what we all want? Um, so just find a hook that, that they can get excited about and, and allow, them to, allow them to create, allow them to pursue their, their, their wonders that they have um, because most students and most children have something within a certain area that they can, that can really grab them. And so what have you learned about yourself as a teacher and about what you believe, uh, not only about the work that you do, about, but about the children that uh, are before you every day. What's the biggest piece of learning you've taken away over the past couple of years? Um, I think I've sort of been reinvigorated in my practice. I don't, uh, I don't um, count down the days of you know school anymore because you're always doing something fun and new and and you're always uh, have students excited and uh, so it excites me it, it allows me 
I, I think I was an always naturally curious person, but it allows me to be that person in school instead of the authority, the figure of authority, and uh, that's exhausting. No one, I can't imagine a career where I'm just worried about managing and controlling. I'm, I'm free to explore and, and, you know, experience this wonderful feedback when students are excited and, and, and facilitate that and guide them into, you know, uh, into an area of learning and, and into, the, into the world, uh, which is, um, I, I don't think I'm going to have to worry about being uh, bored or uh, being burnt out from having to be this uh, f power figure of struggling to, to maintain power and control over a group of naturally exuberant, boisterous children.